What's up, people on the interwebs? David again with Dude That Stupid, Brown on the camera. Hello. And uh, great video today. Probably the most useful video that we've come out with since the painting video, which was our first video. But uh, we're gonna show you how to do drywall patches um, because most of your homeowners suck at drywall. You're really bad at drywall. And you're gonna still suck at drywall after watching this video. It takes a while to get good at drywall, but uh, hey, we're gonna give you some free information and we're not even gonna charge you for it. So here we go. Okay, so I was at Home Depot the other day, leaving the parking lot. And I was walking beside a guy who was leaving the parking lot. And he had like four or five buckets of drywall mud and every size knife that you could buy. He had like a four, six, eight, 12, 14, and a couple of uh, mud pans. And I couldn't help but thinking, I'd really like to put a bug on this guy and watch him go home and fin finish his drywall because I guarantee it was horrible. Guarantee you he's make, gonna make the same mistake that y'all probably make. So here's the number one mistake that most homeowners do is they put, they don't go wide enough with their patches. You can't be scared to go wide enough with your patches and then what they do when they go too wide, they try to do it wide or they, they're too narrow, then they don't sand it enough and they get a really hard edge on that drywall mud and you can tell. I can tell exactly every time I go into a house if the homeowner is trying to do a drywall patch because it doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to show you a couple of di different, if you're doing a brand new bathroom, don't be scared to take off more drywall than you need to because we can do pretty good patches. You probably can't do them as good and you're, you, you don't, and they're going to look really bad. So don't be scared to take off more drywall than you need. And this bathroom right here, Brown show them that we actually went and we took, we took all the drywall off just cause it was gonna make it easier. And that is the uh, moisture resistant drywall. It's purple, it's really pretty. It's, or lilac, maybe you call that lilac, but I really like the color of the drywall. I might leave it that color. I don't care what the customer wants. But, okay, so you got different kinds of patches. This right here, and Brown's done, but really didn't need to put this here. You could have put a whole sheet of drywall idiot oops but anyway for uh viewing purposes that works out good because this is a butt joint butt joint you want to put more drywall screws in it because this is it's, it's budding on a on a stud and you don't want this to crack these will tend to crack if you don't put enough screws in them this right here we this is kind of a uh it's called the bed joint this is a, i guess uh what do you call it when it goes in a little bit inverted mm -hmm. inverted a little bit so this gets a nice bed of mud okay not like like a, not like a bed you sleep in but like drywall okay so and then you got your you got your inside corners and then we only got one outside corner here we use several different kinds of tape for your different uh joints so first off we just use regular um uh, it's a green uh, supposed to be like moist uh mold resistant drywall tape it's a fiberglass tape so we use this on all our bed joints we don't use the paper tape so we use this on all of our bed joints and stake put your knife right there man it cuts so that's what we're going to use on our bed joints for your butt joints what? did you fart maybe sorry Dude, come on now anyway for your butt joints sorry for our immaturity uh this is a fiberglass tape. This stuff actually tears pretty easy, but this is a super thin uh, fiberglass tape. And this is what you're, you you go ahead, it will go ahead and mud, but that, and then you put that over top of it. We use these on the butt joints because it doesn't tend to have any cracks. For your, we don't use, like I said, we don't, we never use paper tape, even though it's cheap, but we don't go cheap. If you go cheap, you're probably gonna suck. Uh, for your inside corners, we use a straight flex, or I got this from uh, Rocky Top Materials. It's a good stuff. Level line, it's actually a little bit better. It's what we're using. We're gonna use this up first, but 
you can use it straight flex for inside and outside corners for a lot of outside corners i don't use it unless i know that it's not going to get much traffic and i need a really nice corner but this stuff's awesome for inside corners and then if you go right when you go to the corner just kind of you're going to clip these a little bit into the corner so that it's not as sharp on your outside corner the print on this will actually face the wall and that gives you a little bit of a bead right there which is kind of when you use the normal we use normal we, we usually use plastic corner bead uh you have that bead but i don't want that bead right here because it'll kind of push my tile out all right first coat here on our bed joint. bed joints are by far the easiest so I'm gonna look, this is eight inch knife. I don't know if you can see that there. It has a slight bend in that, on that blade. So I want the frowny part, or I guess the smile part towards the, towards the wall. So I get a look, that way it's not inverted and I'm not taking off too much, but I'm gonna have the, the hump this way towards the wall and I'm gonna, that way I, I, I embed it in there. So I'm just gonna put me a little bit there. And I'm gonna go ahead and be honest. We, uh, if you look at other drywall videos on YouTube and the interwebs, they're really, they're better than us. Like they're really fast. Okay, I'm not gonna say they're better than us, but they're really fast. We're really good, but it's not fast if we don't do it every day. I don't wanna do drywall every day. Drywall is like painting, it sucks. But it's part of the process. We do the whole process. So. Anyway, we're showing you how we do it because we do it how you can do it at home to make it look good, okay? So I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm not gonna press it in too hard. Go over it again. Okay. Then you got a little bit of stuff right here. Turn the knife over. And that'll get that off. So first coat, I'm just worried about getting that tape embedded on that joint. Yeah, the butt joint. So I spread my mud down that. Uh, put this on here right in the middle. And this stuff's pretty uh, easy to break so you gotta, you gotta be careful so got it on there again i want the inverted side uh i, I want the i'm gonna go, i'm gonna hit really lightly right there because i don't want to pull it and i don't want it to break and then i'm gonna go back up that way and then i'm gonna turn it over and then i'm gonna have the Humped that way, I guess on this side. And then, same thing on that side. And another thing is, that's going over top of that bed joint. On the first coat, you will be all right doing them um, if that's still wet, but, cause we're gonna do three coats. Don't think you're, don't be lazy in do two coats you only thing that takes two coats for the most part is your inside corners you should be able to get your inside corners with two coats but everything else i mean some if to get your bed joints good i mean your uh, butt joints good sometimes they might even take depending on how your framing is it might even take four coats so most of the time three but sometimes four inside corners you need this tool right here i don't know what it's called but it's a little uh, wool covered roller and you can buy them. We bought this at Rocky Top Materials in Knoxville. But I think you can also buy them at most of your paint stores. I know you can find them at Sherwin Williams. I don't know about Home Depot and the Willow store, but this is what you're gonna do. I mi We mix this mud up right here. A little bit, uh, we put a little bit of water in it uh, to make it a little bit thinner. So, and we do use, this is what we use all the time, the all purpose, uh, um usg joint compound with the green lid uh, sometimes we do mix up some hot mud for patches but anyway this is a little bit thinner 
And you want to mix up your joint compound, even if you're not doing this anyway. You want it to be nice and creamy. But, uh, so you get it on this. And then... You're going to use this. And that's going to apply that to both sides. Which is way better than trying to use a knife to do this. And yeah, when you do drywall, a lot of it's going to... You're going to have something hits the floor. So, then... Take your tape, I clip this a little bit so it doesn't go past the top. Put it in there. A lot of people don't use these, but I do just to embed these on the first coat. So I'm gonna take this, apply pretty good pressure. I pull down a little bit, I hold it. Pretty good pressure. And that really embeds that in there good. And then I'm gonna take my six inch knife on this first coat. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just gonna clean that up with the six inch knife. And inside corners really are that easy. If you use this. Can't forget about your screw holes. When you're doing your screw holes, you can use, this is a three inch knife, you can also use a four inch, but the screw holes are going to need probably three coats too, but they're really easy. And you're gonna keep, uh, this is my knife that I keep in my pants, and got a Phillips head on it, uh, or just keep a Phillips screwdriver with you. So when you go around, you wanna make sure that uh, the, idiot, the idiot that didn't, that didn't saw the drywall and uh, put the screws in enough, and most of the time they're really stupid and they don't. So, here we go, we're just gonna tighten those if they're not tight enough, and then that easy, just go here. All right, here we go, we're starting our second coat. Brown, show them right there, that's a, uh, we put some drywall blue dye in that, it's specifically made for drywall, uh, that way we can tell we're on our second coat. Uh, and then since yesterday I got on the interwebs and then I looked up concave versus convex turns out the concave is the bold out so That would be on this side that pot side is bowed out So that way I can better teach y'all how to do drywall and we're not as stupid now Um, okay, uh, so turns out I'm a little bit stupider than I thought and um the concave versus convex thing, I just whatever you with you about. I was totally wrong. <laughs> Sorry. So in this video, every time I say concave, imagine that I said convex, because that's what I should be saying. Because concave is like a divot, like a cave. Convex is like your eyeball, like or a uh, or a contact lens. That's convex. Or like, like a football. So every time I say concave, I make convex. Sorry, people. I'm stupid. But the name of it is Dude That Stupid. So I made it stupid. Sorry. So I want concave out when I'm gonna do this on the second coat again. And you are gonna see I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure see how much wider that is. Because on the next coat, we're gonna go concave in but and when you do this just go right over don't worry about that outlet just go right over top of that outlet because that stuff that it'll it'll pop out once it dries because if you don't get all the way around that outlet you'll be able to see it and I, then i'm gonna go concave in right there smooth it out Voila. Smooth, baby, smooth. Yeah, don't eat that. It looks kind of tasty, like maybe like blue raspberry ice cream or something. Or actually it looks like Blue's Clue. That's how it looks like Blue's Clue, don't it? Mm -hmm. The exact same color as Blue's Clue. I, don't, I, I, I sometimes still watch that show. What's the guy's name? Steve. 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 All right, same thing. Concave out. 
when we're doing this butt joint right here. And it, and it'll pretty much just kind of, uh, you know, I got that and then you're going to put quite a bit of mud on this. And on the second coat, you don't want to over, you want to make sure this is dry before you do that bed joint. Okay, then, you know how on the bed joint, I came back with concave in to clean that up. I don't want to do that this time on this uh, butt joint because on my next, on my next coat, on my third coat, I'm gonna go concave in and I'm gonna Go a little bit wider and that's gonna smooth it out. All right, second coat on this uh, inside corner. I'm using an eight inch knife. I'm gonna go concave out. And sometimes on these, if you're not real good, just do one side at a time. Because what's gonna happen if you try to do both and you suck at drywall and it's just the first time, you're like, oh, I'm good at drywall now. It's probably not because you're gonna keep on eating in when you get on the other side. So I'm gonna try, sometimes I even do it. Yeah, see? See how I'm eating in right there? And I'm sure there's a trick to it, but I kinda, we kinda get that when we stand. Just smooth that out, I'm gonna try to go back over the top of it. Yeah. There we go. So and that should be the last coat on that inside corner. Final coat on this uh, bed joint right here. Um, it's a 14 inch knife right here. Uh, remember when we went eight, then we went 12, it's 14. So we're going concave out 14 inch and we're gonna fill in the rest of that bed. Not using the blues clue mud anymore. And put me a big, Wide in the middle right there. Yeah, you mix this mud up really nice. Thank you. You're welcome. That was pretty good consistency Stupid. there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I love you. Uh, and then, remember, going concave in. Cleaning that up there. And get, show them how slick that is, bro. Oh, baby. And the main thing is we're wanting to fill in that bed. And that's about as wide as you want to go. You can go wider. I mean, it doesn't hurt. It's just more sanding. And if you don't have a a nice sander like we have, uh, you're not gonna like yourself if you go wider. Third coat on this butt joint. Uh, and we don't wanna go concave out because that's basically gonna do nothing. That's just gonna, that's just gonna kind of uh, mimic what we have. So it's not gonna hold it. It's not gonna pull any mud. So we're gonna, this time on this coat, on the third coat on these butt joints, you don't want to spray mud in the middle. I'm going to go concave in, and I'm going to go down this side, and I'm going to go down this side. And that'll fill it in to the middle. Right. So, you can see we got a little bit of a build up in the middle but we've overlapped the the both sides because we had the concave in. Oh, look at that idiot. And then concave in, so it filled in this gap on the outside and smoothed it out and it and it didn't build it up too much in the middle. Because if you build it up too much in the middle, that's where it's gonna show. So you kinda you gotta gotta fade it out so you don't see all the buildup. Here we are after three coats 
and we're about to take the sander to all these walls, and ceilings, all these joints. Uh, Brown's showing you what, what everything's looking like right now. Everything looks real good. Everything has three coats, except for those inside corners, they have two. Here's a couple things you're gonna need when you start sanding. You're gonna need one of these sanding sponges. Don't try to do everything with a sanding sponge. Most of the time with a sanding sponge, all you're gonna do is maybe just get little edges with it, just to clean up edges, and then to do these inside corners. However, first thing, set your fans up if you can, put a fan. Uh, we got this door closed, we got a plastic barrier out there, and we got our air cleaner. The last thing a homeowner wants is a bunch of dust in their bedroom or living room, wherever it be. Don't do that. Or if it's just your house, don't, you don't want dust everywhere. That's a good way for your wife to divorce you. Unless your wife's doing the sand, and then you suck if you're making your wife doing the sand. But, or you figured it out. Huh. <laughs> well, ain't gonna happen in my house. No. But, a couple sanders we got. And remember, we're showing y'all how to do this at home. This is what we use for the ceilings and I mean for, well, for the most part, if we can. Uh, nine inch DeWalt uh, dustless sander. There's a little bit of dust that gets out, but man, this thing's awesome for the ceilings. We're not gonna use that though, cause y'all don't have that at home. And that's not fair. We're gonna use it once we turn the video off. <laughs> so, but what you can use, and in this vacuum, we do got it set up with a dust bag. Don't try to do it with just your filter because that filter is going to clog up in no time you got to have a dust bag then this is a fast tool five inch battery powered uh orbital sander the difference between this orbital sander and the one that you're probably going to have from home depot is this one actually orbits the dumb ones that they sell at home depot that you probably use for woodworking and stuff which that's what this is for they don't orbit they just vibrate which well, is stupid for them to call it orbital sander that seems like a class action lawsuit. Bye bye, I want it to orbit. I want it to do what it says. This actually orbits. And then this is a sanding screen, which is way better than the sanding pads that just have the holes like this. So like this thing will actually draw up dust through this Velcro right here. So, but this thing is pretty much dust free. Uh, it's awesome. It's nice, it's battery power. Use this, it helps you see Gonna help you see all your spots better. Use a spotlight, it helps. And this is two, this 220 grit? This yes. is 220 grit uh, sandpaper. And then, uh, let's show you. Yeah, we're getting that edge right there. We're getting it to fade in. If you have little pieces like that, don't, don't go too hard on them. Cause you can get that after the fact, after you prime. All right, so you see this, and you don't want to run your hand over it to see how smooth it is. But see how I didn't take too much off? And I've just kind of faded it in on these edges. Also, you also notice that you don't see any of the, of the tape. If you start getting into the tape, ease off because you're gonna burn that tape and you will see it. Because what's gonna happen after this is we're gonna prime it. Uh, if you do see places like that, after we prime, we'll hit those. But, see up my nail holes? You don't wanna take those and start burning your paper, it, your, 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 your drywall paper. So, once you get those and you can kinda see that hole, that's pretty much done. You will not see that. So, we're gonna keep on sanding. Uh, we'll show you what it looks like at the end. And then, uh, we're gonna prime. And then at the primer, we will hit spots. But in the meantime, here you go, Brown. Thank you. My turn. All right, here's what we look like before. We're going to prime it. Everything's sanded. And the cool thing about using the colors is you can tell which coat you're getting down to. So you can tell if you're sanding too much because you're getting more 
blue uh, from underneath it. So, what would it look like? We got everything primed. Uh, Brown, go ahead and show them uh, what everything looks like. Uh, we just used the uh, Kills 2 primer uh, from Home Depot with the, it has the blue label on it. Uh, here's a little tip, use the uh, buy the two gallon stuff instead of the five gallon because uh, uh, you'll save about five dollars a gallon actually. So also uh, we'll go through with a spotlight on everything and uh, touch up this drywall. Uh, any imperfections in it, we'll just, hit, we'll just do it with the little uh, pink, the spackle with the, that goes on pink, we'll use that. Um, and you're gonna have, you, hey, you do everything we showed you how to do, you'll be good at drywall after you screw up a couple times. <laughs> you got, hey, you gotta try before you can do. So, you're gonna try and it's gonna suck the first time. But if you listen, it might not suck as bad as the first time I did it. I sucked really bad. Like it looked horrible. I hate. I would hate to go to that house. But anyway, hey, that's our video. Sorry that I sound bad. Uh, a little under the weather today. Under the weather. Isn't everybody under the weather? Yeah. I guess yeah. So. That's a dumb saying. Yeah. But uh, yeah, allergies. Here's a little uh, side note too. Uh, do you know the, uh, the, wait, what's it called? Navage? Navage? Five. Navage. Went and bought one of those. Uh, works pretty good, but uh, that's got to be about the closest to uh, being waterboarded uh, <laughs> that there can be. It, uh, I felt like I was getting interrogated when I did that, but it pulled a lot of snot out, which is pretty cool. So anyway, y'all didn't need to know that, but now you do. Sorry. Uh, that's our video. Remember, like it, subscribe, and we're gonna make more. But we can't make more. Yeah, we can. We can make more if people don't subscribe, but please subscribe, man. We need subscribers. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.